With me is a proud university dropout who quit campus a few years ago to venture into mushroom growing. And in today's video, I'm going to find out why did he quit campus for this. And so far, how is business moving on his side? You're most welcome to the channel. Thank you, brother. I'm so happy meeting you here today. I'm also happy mm. that I finally met you. <laughs> Why finally? <laughs> yeah, I've been trying, but <laughs> finally it has come. Yeah. Mm. Kindly introduce yourself to our people. So uh, I'm called Nkombe Maiko, mm. and uh, I'm the CEO of Nkombe Mushroom Growers, uh, which deals in mushroom growing, spawn production, and uh, training. I quit campus. I was studying agricultural engineering mm. but after COVID-19 I dropped out mm. to focus on mushroom growing. You went through primary, secondary, you reached campus and you're like no 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 I'm done with this. Why? Me actually I liked school because hey. even I was I was a wise student. Uh -huh. I because I got good grades even at senior four I got 28. Wow. At senior six, I got 16 points. I was Are you doing, serious? Yeah. Which, which combination were you doing? I was doing PCM. PC <laughs> That's a big combination, bro. Yeah. <laughs> and with that, mm. I got a government sponsorship. Okay, this is interesting. Yeah. When I reached campus, and then I started to access uh, internet because I got my first smartphone mm. after senior six. Okay. So when I reached campus, with free internet, I started to research. So I started to pick interest in business. Hold on, which campus was that? I was at Bustema University. Bustema University, this one in Toro. Yeah. Opposite in, these solar farms, yeah, big solar farms. Yeah, in Eastern Uganda. Along the highway. Yeah, along the highway. Yes, yes, yes. Mm. So I started to pick interest in business. Even when I was doing my agricultural engineering course, mm. I was thinking about business. When I was in senior five, I was working with my brother. Mm. Also had a mushroom farm. Oh, this is mm. where mm. you pick the interest. Yeah. Okay. But he also my brother picked interest from my mom. <laughs> it's a family thing. Yeah. Okay. Also, my brother mm. studied medicine. Okay. Also was was doing sciences. Did you complete some campus, your brother? Yeah, completed okay. very well, mm. but never looked for a job. Okay. Came straight into mushroom growing. Mm. And my brother actually, right now, is doing good. Mm. He's not in Kampala, but built a house, both plots in mushroom growing. So when I got my allowances, I, I invested into mushroom growing. Which, which allowances? The government sponsored students would oh. get allowances. By the way, how much money do you guys get as allowances? So uh, by then we used to get five hundred and sixty thousand. Okay. The whole semester. Okay. Mm -hmm. mm. And that would be enough for you? Yeah, if you're cooking for that the entire semester? If you're cooking, mm. that would be enough. Okay. If you are not into luxury. Okay. That money came towards the end of the semester. Mm. So by the way, we are using our money. Mm. So when that money came, I sent it to my brother mm. to invest in mushroom for me. Mm. I started to watch videos on YouTube mm. about businesses. So mm. they, like, they changed my mind how I looked about the world. Mm. It was like me I was focused on learning, but I realized that what is important is to make to earn a living. You mean school doesn't teach that? So school can teach you that, but with another mindset. Mm. So they teach you that you are going to be looking for a job after. So I said, mm -mm. let me start investing slowly. After my two years, I can come and focus on businesses. When the pandemic came, that's 2019, 2020. Yeah, 2019, yeah. 2020. Mm. That man I had invested had made me I had invested 400 and I made 1 million. Wow. In which period of time? In one month. In one month? Yeah. You invested 400 yeah. and you made a million. A million. You made 60% of your investment. Yeah, yeah. 
Wow. So, towards the end of the pandemic, I, I gained confidence and I started my own farm. Afterwards, now the pandemic relaxed and we had to go back. But the heart was telling me to not go back to campus. Eh. To, because my, my project had peaked, mm -hmm. though it wasn't here, it was somewhere else. Where was it? It was uh, Muyenga. Okay. It, it was Muyenga. Where the rich hide? Yeah, where the rich hide. <laughs> I had even started to tell my colleagues that I'm not going back. Mm. Because we are like, hey, you, you have a first class, you are wasting it. Mm. Because I was passing, even I, would, I was on diploma, but I, I would train those guys on bachelors because we are doing the same course units. Are you serious? Yeah. I would train them math, mm -hmm. engineering math. And then they were like, who, who is going to be revising with us? So like I, I was emotional, <laughs> I said, even I had, I had finished two, uh, like a year. Mm. I said, let me go back and finish. Then the second wave came. When they said, you are going back to lockdown, I was happy. Now students were like, why are you happy? You are, you are, it's not that you are failing. I think business corrupted uh, your mind. Maybe. <laughs> so some people- Money were, corrupted your mind. Yeah. People were like, I was happy. Now people were like, we who are failing are mm. the ones who should be happy. But mm. you, things are okay. When the, the second wave, uh, relaxed. Uh, relaxed. Mm. I had made up my mind. So you choose to settle with mm. business. To settle with business. What was your parents' reaction? People close to you, your relatives, oh. friends. Bro, mm? parents will say, we have been paying you school fees to bring us papers. Mm. Are you mad? You are <laughs> even going to get another sponsorship from the government. Mm. So I, I told them, what is important is to earn a living. Mm. And the papers, those are papers. I haven't dropped knowledge. Me, I'm going to continue learning. There is YouTube, there is Google. I'm going to continue learning. Mm. It is not the end. Mm. So I've been learning. I dropped campus, but I like education. Learning is continuous. For life. Mm. So I believe it's been like four years since yeah. you made up your mind. Yeah. How is business right now? Do you regret dropping campus for this or you're proud of your decision? I can't regret anything. Mm. Because if I had gone back to campus, which means I would be now struggling to look for jobs here and there, applying. But now it's like I've built a foundation. Mm. So even, even those ones who were on bachelor's for years, mm. now they call me asking for help. Are you serious? Can you advise us what we can do? Mm. We, have, we have looked for jobs, but the pay is small, jobs mm. are not there. Can you tell us which, which project can we do? Mm. Talking about the job space, mm. how many employment opportunities have you created at all your farms, the three farms? Uh, so uh, I work with seven uh, motivated workers mm. uh, directly. Directly. How about those indirectly who so, do part time? So I give uh, employment like to transporters who transport materials to different places. Mm. My spawn, I use uh, glass bottles. There are those who collect those bottles. Oh, okay. I use firewood. I employ those people. They get money from firewood. Mm. There are very many things we buy. So all those ones mm. I, I get, I can earn a living. So you think all together, seven plus these other ones mm. who do indirectly, mm. how many are you all together? So I think... But now I, I impact like 50 lives, both indirectly wow. and directly. Wow, well done, young man. Thank you. How old are you? So I'm 24 years. Right now you're just 24. Yeah, I'm 24 years. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, so right now, mm. I would like us to understand mushroom growing. I believe many people have clicked this video to understand your story and also to find out more about mushroom growing. So everything here is new to me. I would like you to take us through this business and how profitable it is so over here i have these big saucepans I, I, let me call them saucepans for the lack of the right word to use <laughs> kindly take us through these ones you can call them big saucepans mm. we use them for soaking mm. our substrate okay so this is our substrate mm. so we use these ones for soaking our substrate mm. so substrates are 
you can call them like soil. So remember, soil is a media. Uh, yeah. It's like it is used to hold water and nutrients. Yes. So this one also hold water and nutrients. Okay. For the mushroom. Why do you use cotton? These are cotton hassocks. Mm. So we use cotton hassocks because they have the nutrients we need for mushrooms. They are already rich in the yeah, nutrients. Yeah, they are already rich in the nutrients. Mm. And second of all, it is reliable. It's there are very many substrates, mm. but you find that they are in small quantities. So with cotton, you can get it in plenty. Mm. Though you can try other things. You can try maize cobs. You can try maize hassocks. You can mm. try sugarcane burgers. So what are sugarcane burgers? So sugarcane burgers, when you cut sugarcane, these, these sugar factories, mm. after removing... Oh, after squeezing the juice. Yeah, the juice. Mm. Those remaining ones. Okay. Those ones are also good. They are called just, burgers. Yeah, eh? burgers. <laughs> we just need to alter. Okay. Like the way you alter your soil mm. to make it suitable for anything you want to plant. Mm. So, if we find, even with this cotton, we add some few additives to make it more suitable. Okay. Mm. Now, why are you soaking it here? And why is it in this big benson? Mm. And I can see under the, the, I'm calling it a benson, a saucepan. I can see under the saucepan, there is a furnace, though you've not yet light it up. Why? So... This, this process is called soaking. Mm. We use it for soaking and we use it during sterilization. Mm. So these ones, we are going to remove them and put them there. To dry them? To ferment. Oh. And also to drain the water because it will be in excess. So remember, nothing can grow without water. Mm. So that we soak in water. Mm. So we put it there. But also the right amount of water. Mm. So when we put it there, it is going to drain and we remain with that very amount that mm. we want. Mm. The required so, one. The required one. Mm. How we know it, we use squeeze test. Okay. We squeeze, then we see. When you can see those droplets, mm. now like this one is suitable. That's okay. how it should be. Okay. A few droplets. But now if it is like this, mm. that, that one cannot support. Okay. Uh, the, the seeds for me. All right. We also have a spawn lab mm. uh, where I make my spawns. Mm. What we call the mushroom seeds. Mm. This, this, is, this is the one we call mushroom seeds. Uh, in the mushroom language, we call it spawn. Mm. S P A W N. Mm. Uh, spawn. So these are the mushroom seeds. And inside here, we use. It looks like cotton. Now, this is not cotton. <laughs> <laughs> is it because you use cotton, cotton hassocks? <laughs> so, uh, here also, what is here is also called the substrate. Okay. But for this, we use grains. So, inside there, we have millet grains. Mm. It is the substrate we use. Why millet grains? So, millet grains, also it has like the nutrients we need. Okay. And also, it is easy to, to work with millet grains in bottles mm. because the cotton hassocks we can also use it to make spawn. Mm. But we, for it, it can't go here. So, we use packing bags. Yeah, there are specific packing bags we use to make if we want to use that substrate. Mm. So, here we use grains. You can use even sorghum. Mm. Mm. So, what you see, this white one, we call it mycelium. Mycelium. Mm. Before you go to the mycelium, mm. why do you, because I can see all the bottles here are transparent. Mm. Why do you use transparent bottles? So, transparent bottles, like, I'm going to give you an example. Mm. I have here my bottle. Oh, yeah. Which is not, tran like, it is like translucent. Uh, translucent, or opaque. almost opaque. Yes. So, we also get contaminants. Mm. Like they, they get contaminations. So it is hard for you to identify that my bottle is sick when you can't see. Okay, so this one helps you to observe. To observe that my, my, my seeds or my, my spawn is moving properly. Mm. So this one is very sick. So me, who knows it, I can identify. Okay. But for someone... To a newbie, 
it can be a bit challenging to identify. Yeah, to identify. Mm. Because the, 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 I can see that the, the mycelium here is not proper. Mm. So I know that this one is sick. Okay. So the contaminants we are talking about, now this one is contaminated. Mm. So this one you can see, you can identify and isolate it. This one has some, is this algae? Yeah, it algae is. Inside? It is uh, the, but we call it green mold. Green mold. Mm. It okay. Is, it is also, if it is also a, a fungi, mm. but it is a mold. Mm. So this one is everywhere. When you go to any damp place, you can see this green. So this is green mold. Any damp site? Mm. Yes. Uh, you can see green mold anywhere where water normally goes. Mm. So what I have here, I have also here a uh, DIY, uh, like... I did it myself. <laughs> DIY. <laughs> DIY uh, collab. It's so, a laboratory. Uh, it is a lab. What happens inside there? So here it's where we spawn. Sp spawning is like putting the mother. So these ones also have types. We have culture. We have mother. Then we have spawns. Mm. So whatever we are doing with these ones, mm. we use it from under this side. Okay. It is the DIY. Mm. but it works properly mm. so why this why not here mm. so this one acts as a steel box or steel air box steel air box uh, now in a layman's language mm. what's that so a steel air box so contaminants are carried by air air mm. oh this one locks the air movement yeah, it locks the air movement mm. so that the air inside there is almost steel Mm. So, contaminants falling into your spawn, it is reduced. Minimal. It is minimal. Mm. Don't you suffocate when you're down there? So, when we are under here, we leave, uh, this is not big enough for too much. So, we leave it like this. Mm. And we don't stay this side for so long. Mm. And when you go inside, by the way, you realize that it is cool. Mm. This is like my store. Mm. For my empty glass bottles. Mm. All these are empty glass bottles. All those ones. <laughs> we have over these are many. We have over two thousand glass bottles. Wow. Here. They are collected mm. from dumping sites. So uh, this is also an employment I I give you created to, for some uh, people. Uh, for some people. Mm. This side it's where we put our ready gardens. Mm. But now we have cleared it for another bunch uh, of, of gardens. Mm. Uh, up here, mm. uh, we do uh, intubation, mm. where we intubate our gardens. Oh, these ones need to be intubated as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, mm. uh, they also need to be intubated like eggs. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, this is uh, our second farm. Do you welcome visitors? Yeah. People who want to visit your farm, who want to come and see, do you welcome them? Yeah, you welcome everyone, mm. and uh, I don't charge if you are coming to visit. I don't charge. Especially you. if you're from UG Connect. Yeah, especially <laughs> if you're a, a follower <laughs> of UG Connect, <laughs> you come and you just visit. Okay. But but if you want to train, there mm. I charge you. Okay. Now, why did you choose to use mabati, papyrus, mm. and? Uh, Polythens. The reason I use the Cavera here because it is cheap. It was, mm. it was cheap. There is no any other reason. Mm. So, but the reason I use the Mabati on top instead of papyrus, we normally use papyrus to keep humidity mm. down. But because these ones are tall, so the heat, I'm not worried about the heat. Mm. So I use the Mabati because they stay for so long. Mm. But the papyrus will stay for a few, they will need the replacement mm. always. Mm. But the Mabati... Especially during the rainy season. Yeah, all, during the rainy season, you mm. need to repress them always. Mm. So the Mabati can stay long. But I recommend, if you are using Mabati, raise it a little bit. Higher. Higher, and maybe you put... As you can see, my, my structure, there is, a, there is a separation in between mm. where I put uh, some... Uh, timber, mm. sort of timber. You told me that it is for intubation yeah, and the other for farm. for intubation. It is mm. the same reason here. Mm. So, the Mabati you see here, it is just for protection. For those who don't understand what Mabati is, mm. uh, Mabati is a common word in East Africa. Most East Africans understand that word. It's the iron sheets, the metallic iron sheets. Yeah, the metallic iron sheets. Mm. 
So this is like these are simple structures like you reduce on the cost so you don't focus too much on the you the invest in what brings money money so the mushrooms will not ask you that why am I <laughs> not <if? laughs> why is it not cemented they won't ask you that <laughs> I love that <laughs> <laughs> So I learned that from my friend um um my friend called Sarah, mm. the owner of Air Farms, she's a good farmer. Mm. She said, mm. when you're investing in structures, mm. don't put there a lot of money. Yeah. Start with simple structures because money is in the gods. Invest in stock, not in structures, because yeah. that's what brings money. Stock. So most beginners, they do that mistake. They want to have a neat place, nice yeah. looking. They, yeah, they want to impress people, mm. but when they are make, they are not making money. Mm. So. At the end, after a few, uh, maybe a few months, you are going to go broke, and mm. then you fail. Mm. So if you invest, if so you either way, whether it's in a neat place or mm. something like this, mm. the production remains the remains same. It the can same. even be higher here. Yeah, it can be higher. So what you do, mm. you focus on making conditions, the, like the right conditions. So when you see my structure, this side is mabati mm. or iron sheets. But the other side, I use papyrus. Mm. So this papyrus will allow fresh air exchange. Mm. Fresh air exchange. So you, you don't need to put mabat all over because your mushrooms will suffocate they, because they also take in oxygen mm. and produce carbon dioxide. Mm. So here... Wow, these ones are big. Eh? Yeah, so these are... <laughs> this is a, a, a sospa... You can call it a saucepan, but I, I call it a drum. Mm. It's a small drum, but they join it. These mm. small ones, but they are joined by welders okay. to make it big. So these ones are three drums. Yeah, these are three drums. To make one saucepan. Wow. Yeah, so this one, it can, it can cost you 600,000 to make it mm. uh, from the welders. Mm. And as you can see, this space, it is very small, but I managed to squeeze all of this one in this small space, mm. as you can see. So why do we have these? These are, you say these are cultures, gardens, spent gardens, spent gardens. Uh, these ones, they no longer produce. Oh, they no longer produce. Ah, it's actually very light. Eh? Uh, it is very light. Mm. Uh, so, what makes it heavy when it is still fresh? There is some water. water. When, so when it starts drying, water goes away. Mm. So this one, we use it as firewood. Oh, down mm. here. Uh, down there. That's why you collect it there to yeah, dry? That's why it's dry. And then I, I use it with my firewood. Mm. This, I don't use it alone, mm. but I put a few firewood and then this one. And they I produce see. a very good flame. Okay. Mm. It's like briquettes. Okay. Mm. So how long does one garden take to stop giving you mushrooms? So it will take you uh, two to three months. Two to three months, mm. and by the by the time it gives up, mm. how many kilos has it given you? So it will give you between one point five and two point five, depending on your nutrient content. Oh. During uh, those months, mm. so if we do the math, let's say I use the minimum amount of. Let's say I say I use the minimum kgs one kilo. Let me use one kilo as the minimum. Mm. So let's say you have 1,000 gardens. Those are 1,000 kilos. Mm. So if you're selling at 5,000, that is the minimum they can give you. 5, That's 000. 5 million. That's 5 million. And when you decide to do it on a larger scale, you can even make much more money. Yeah, much more money. So the more you put in, mm. the more the more. Now 1,000 gardens can mm. fit in an area like this, right? Yeah. Oh, this one is too big for it. So, one southern gardens, you see, let, use five feet. Five by five? Uh, five feet. So there I have 1,500. Wow. And that one, I think, if it is too big, it is like, I think, 15 by 10. By so 10. even if you have a small room, mm. you can put your gardens there. Mm -hmm. You create an optimum atmosphere for them mm. and they will give you dollars yeah, and they will give you dollars <laughs> <laughs> let's talk about the market the mushroom mm. market in uganda mm. how do you find it how do you see it as you who has been in this for quite some good time so uh 
the market it will depend where you are, your location. Mm. So this one is a, they need to be sold as fast as possible because their shelf life is a bit short. Short. Mm. So you need to be in an area where there is a lot of people. And these mushrooms, they take short time to, to get ready. So people would prefer to to take mushrooms over beans because beans they will consume a lot of if it is charcoal they will take mm. a lot of charcoal if it is gas but these ones mm. a few minutes it's that they are actually cool. and they are rich in proteins i'm surprised yeah the only vegetable is proteins wow uh, so this one they have antioxidants mm. uh, they can help you like they can ease if you are having cancer cells mm. they can ease that so they have a lot of nutrients, mm. vitamin C, mm. you know, vitamin C, it helps yeah. boosting immunity. Yes. So this is, we call it a grow room. Mm. It's quite dark here. Uh, so it is dark. Mm. They are not photosynthetic. Mm. Uh, photo, meaning that they don't need light to, to make food. Uh, to make food. Mm. Uh, so these ones, they just need water and nutrients. It's very cool in here, guys. Mm very very cold mm. so the cooling mm. we are raising humidity mm. but uh, by misting there are other ways you can raise the humidity uh, some some people use humidifiers mm. it is a machine which produces humidity mm. but for us we we spray so that's how we raise our humidity mm. by spraying water mm. inside here mm. this one also helps to capture heat from the iron sheets Oh, it mm. blocks that mm. heat. It blocks. Apart from, like, apart from being uh, an intubation area, mm. it helps in uh, uh, catching the heat. It mm. blocks the heat. And the iron suit is a bit far. Mm, I see. Mm. I see. So when do you get to know that these mushrooms are ready for harvest, ready to be harvested? How do you know that? So uh, when mushrooms are ready to be harvested, mm. Uh, there are like three ways you can know. Mm. One is the color. So when you look at this mushroom, it is a little bit uh, gray in the mm. color. It's grayish. Uh, grayish. Mm. When it starts to, to get uh, ready, it starts to turn into white. Mm. So that is the number one. Mm. And the second one, when you see that it, it is starting to open, like because it's supposed to be like this. Mm. So when it starts to open like this, you know that it is trying to produce spores. Mm. So it is, uh, it is, it is growing. Uh, it is trying to show you that it is overgrowing. Mm. So another thing, as you can touch. So if you touch it like this and you feel like it is, it is light, mm. you know that it is ready. It is ready. Mm. Also, uh, a mushroom which is ready, you can see it, just you can see it, as you can see the, the surface. It shows you that it is starting to, to be light. Yeah? Mm. There are some people who say that these are artificial mush mushrooms. <laughs> 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 that they are not nutritious, uh, you get? Because you propagate them uh, artificially. Uh, what do you have to say about it? Uh, that? Are they really artificial or what? So uh, by artificial, what do you mean by artificial? That they are not natural, they are not wild <laughs> mushrooms. So uh, we are imitating uh, the, 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 what the wild mushrooms go through. So this is the process that they go through. Mm. But it takes place under the soil. Mm. So uh, scientists studied it. Mm. And just, we can grow them, we can use the other technique they use mm. to do this. Like the way, the way we have seeds for for beans mm. but uh, there are beans that grow in the wild but there are people who started to gather it and uh, developed a technique domesticated them they uh, domesticated them so these ones they grow naturally in, uh, in uh, europe in, uh, those those forests in europe when you go to canada mm. they, they grow on trees and mm. those uh, they are woodlands, trees, uh, woodlands. Mm. Uh, but uh, after developing a technique you can grow them like on a commercial because you can't wait for trees to give you mm. they are going to give you a few mushrooms but when you develop a technique you can grow them on a large scale mm. uh, so another thing mm. uh, these mushrooms uh, 
they, they developed an idea uh, during the, the, the World War. Mm. Because these mushrooms, they, they, are, they take a short time to grow. Mm. So they, they developed a technique where they would uh, grow these mushrooms and feed them to the soldiers during the World War. Okay. Because it was like, it, it is the first growing food. Mm. So they, and it has a lot of protein. So they would get energy and yet the, it grows very fast. Mm. Like this one, in just two days, it is going to be like this. Are you serious? Yeah. This small one? This small one in two days. It's going to be like, be this. like this one. Wow. So, so you see how fast it grows. Mm. So the soldiers would feed on this one during the World War. Mm. Mm. The good thing with mushrooms is that it can give you on a daily basis. You can earn daily. You can earn daily. How do you go about market as an individual? Apart from setting up your farm in a residential area, mm. I believe you don't sell to only residents. Yeah. You have to look for bigger markets. Yeah. How do you go about that? So uh, I do uh, online marketing. I market on GG. Mm. Uh, I market on Facebook. Mm -hmm. Marketplace. Uh, I market on TikTok. So uh, you have to, to not sit down and wait for people to look for you. You have to put yourself out, out there. I normally go for exhibitions. Take there your products. There you get one, two contacts. I also participate uh, in different competitions. Okay. Uh, I participated and uh, I won some money. You won some money? You were number one? You were no, the first runner? No, they were choosing eight. I mean ten. Okay. But I was on the, the eighth. The eighth. So I got some, some money. Because we are sixty. When was that? Oh, you were sixty and you were yeah, number eight. Yeah, and I was wow. number eight and we were choosing ten. Okay. Yeah, and uh, I got some money there. How much? It was two point five. Eh, you man, give me some money. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot of money, bro. <laughs> So yeah, that is a lot of money. Hey. Yeah, I invested it also in the project. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Wow, wow. Any last words to the people watching, especially young people? Yeah, the youth. Uh, so uh, the youth, we know we, we like easy things. For me, it has taken me four good years to be with this one. Uh, so uh, it's not like an overnight thing mm, an overnight success it's not mm. it takes time so uh, you have to delay gratification and you did you have to continue learning learning mm. learning like in the business here in the business i learn new information online about business about books record keeping so that those are things we have to look at so you can't run the business without that. Mm. And uh, mostly the youth, they don't want to work. So when you see this one, this is like hard work, but there is money. So uh, you, you have to work. Mm. You don't have to just want to sit on a, a behind a, a, a computer or just start a watch face. <laughs> <laughs> mm. uh, so uh, that is the message uh, to the youth you have right now. Yeah. So to the, to the other people, mm. uh, to, to, to the rest of the... Uh, you were addressing the Gen Zs. Mm. Right now you're addressing the millennials. Yeah, the millennials. <laughs> so I was on the... <laughs> gen the senior generations. Uh, so I uh, understood. Uh, <laughs> uh, so uh, for, for those ones, what I can say mm. is to, to try out like different things. They have been having bias about uh, mushroom growing, but... Uh, they can come and also uh, give it a try. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Now, someone who wants to reach out to you, maybe they want to go through trainings, they want to visit your farm. Mm. How do they find you? Uh, so, uh, mostly you can find me uh, on uh, uh, WhatsApp, my WhatsApp number. You can also find me on uh, my website. Even if you put Nkombe Mushrooms, we shall put it I in see. the comment section, sorry, in the description. Yeah, in the description. Yeah, so, so all, all the contact details. Yeah, my WhatsApp, TikTok, mm. I'm also on Facebook. Mm. You can find me there. Okay, thank mm. you so much, brother. Thank you so for much. For such an insightful conversation we've had. Mm. 
I believe many people have benefited from it. Mm -hmm. Now, if you found value in this story, kindly share it to everyone who you think will benefit from it as well. From us to you, we say bye-bye.